Hello everyone, this is Isabella with Angel Chantress Love. Today we're going to be doing an energy clearing with the Hindu goddess Kali Ma on cults. So let's see what she wants to bring through today. Okay, so one of the first things she's showing me is a very large, thick, black cording at the back of the neck. So it's at the top of the spinal column and it's um, coming up and back. So we're going to bring in some energy to clear this. I have a I have a I and I see the Archangel Michael has joined this session, so we're going to have him use his uh, blue flaming sword of light to cut this connection. We're going to pull the root out. So take a few deep breaths. Um, honey, and see the root being pulled out. Um, honey, oh, Allah, Taika, I am, honey, I am, honey, I am, Yo alamata, aya lame, iya vaveko alamane, aya latio, aya lame. I feel it uh, loosening from the throat chakra. I mean, it feels like it's got a pretty strong grip around the heart, and they're showing me some additional roots that are wrapped around someone's heart. So we're going to go ahead and call in a psychic surgeon to help gently extract these roots from around the heart chakra. We're going to call in Divine Mother Energy. Om Aim Harim Klim Chamulevi Che Namaha Om Aim Harim Klim Chamulevi Che Namaha Om Aim Harim Klim Chamulevi Che Namaha O Alae Tava Eya Manaika Lakana Yo Ayachana Yoma Ayama Yama Lameana Yama Vaito Ayama Lao Ale Kane Saka Ale Kana and Kalima wants to remind you that these cults, they will play on people's wounds. They'll play on their emotional wounds, their guilt, their fears, their especially their abandonment issues. They'll try to get you to join up with them. They'll try to find whatever vulnerabilities that you have in your energetic field, whether they're uh, mental, emotional, physical, any kind of traumas that have happened to you. And they're not just pulling on energies from this lifetime. They're pulling on all all of the soul fragments that you've lost throughout multiple lifetimes across time, space, dimension, reality, different planes of existence. These are very powerful beings and they can feel all of these energies as they rise up. They're very good at manipulating people and getting them to feel like they belong with a group that will support them. But once they get you in there, they will begin to just tear you 
you apart using these wounds and get you to bond to them. And basically, they want to make themselves your God. But you are very much a divine and sovereign being. And no one should ever have that kind of power over you. So it's vitally important that you do your shadow work and that you look at all of those wounded spaces. You're not going to heal the pain by masking it or hiding it or shoving it down in your subconscious mind. It's going to come out because it's in your vibrational frequency and you will continue to attract those people and those situations that poke at that wound until you bring it up fully to the surface and pull it out at the root. So if you start doing that work and you just think about all of the things that people are hooking into to guilt you, to traumatize you, to harm you, and realize it's the majority of the time it's not the person, it's that you carry a frequency of light that these energies want to feed off of. So especially the more that you clear in your own energetic field, the more they will try to get to you through everyone around you. And unfortunately, that kind of becomes a situation where you end up having to release those who are unwilling to do their own shadow work because they become an energetic drain on your light frequency. And Quite honestly, you know, the world needs all of us to advance and to move forward with this. So if you're not willing to do the shadow work, that is your choice. However, those wounds will continue to be poked at and infected by these darker energies that are coming through people on the planet. So it's super important that you do clear everything that you can. And a lot of people think that healing is, you know, uh, you're going to feel better. It's going to be a great process. Yes, eventually you will, but the healing process itself can be quite painful because you are triggered by all of of these old energies as they rise up. So you may feel very great after a healing session, and then you may have a really powerful release as these energies. I like to call it emotional candy. It's like it's on your soul. It's sticky. And as you <laughs> try and purge it out, it just, you're just having to pull all the stuff off of you. And it comes up. It's like you, if you go out and you get a wound on your physical body, and you do nothing but slap a band-aid on it. That wound, it might be a temporary fix to cover that band-aid until you can get to a point where you can face it and heal it. But having an open wound on your body is going to get dirt in it and it's going to get infected. And if you've ever done any amount of healing work, you'll know that if you stub your toe, you may stub it three more times because the energy gets attracted to the wound. So pay attention to where you have wounding emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and you'll see that these energies like a shark in the water detecting blood will find that wound and come at it. So your best defense is to heal the wound within yourself and allow those energies to purge out of your field. And you have so much assistance around you. If you could see the <laughs> the amount of um, ancestors that are healed that you're helping on this planet by releasing generational curses, they can now help you. They are freed up now. Um, as soon as you release them, they, you know, there are so many angels, so many multidimensional beings, so many soul tribe members, so many people on this planet who have come to do this work. And you can call on all of them. You can call on Jesus, the Most High, the gods, the goddesses, the deities, anyone you want to. It is oftentimes only our religious programming, um, which can also in some cases be cult-like because they want you to join their group. They want you to work through them to connect to your God source. But you are God source. You are that energy. 
you don't need anybody else to connect you to it. You just have to recognize that the divine has sent you here to live a life of your choice, to live on a mission for God, to help the planet, to help humanity, to raise the vibration. And that can be anywhere from just living a good and positive and uplifting life to having a soul mission where you get in deep down and dirty and just really cleanse and purge the energies from the matrix. You're here to raise the frequency. So do everything you can to stay positive and uplifted and to clear these old energies out. Every time you work on yourself, every time you look at yourself in the mirror and you face that inner demon, so to say, and you rebuke it and you say, no, it ends here with me. We're not doing this again. We're not passing this down the generational line. Everything that the generations before us did, it is in our DNA. And if they are unhealed and they have passed they are stuck and you have the ability, if you have this knowledge, to free them and yourself and everyone who follows you into this planetary environment or anywhere else in the universe. So we're going to continue clearing. The psychic surgeons are almost done extracting this from the heart. There's just a couple more tentacles of this root that I'm seeing. So let's um, help them out and take a deep breath and let's purge some more. Alameha nai kavata he amanaka he. Alameha kautama ka he amanaka he. He amanaka he tova alamaniko a. Alamaniko adaneka alamaneka na. I amanaka he tova ka alamanika za. E yamaka hatava ka alameka na. I amanaka achameka alamanika cha. So we're going to bring in a frequency here to, I see the Archangel Raphael has joined us. Okay. And he is emitting his beautiful green light. He's placing that around your heart chakra and we're going to seal up all the wounds that were left open from the removal of this writ. So they want to move now to the third eye. They're showing these um, memory, let's call them mind traps. So it's almost like a, a web that goes from the mind of these beings and it um, it's cast out over the mind of the victim of the cult, whoever they're attempting to manipulate. So we need to cut these mind traps from the source. They're showing me um, <laughs> like a, a vision of millions of people and there are all these, these mind traps that have been set. And they're showing me, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so they're showing me also not only are these connected to beings on the planet, these mind traps, but they are connected. Um, they're showing me websites. They're showing me religious establishments. They're showing me businesses. They're showing me locations around the planet. So every time someone enters the field, they can, if their uh, mental energy is not really solidly protected, they can become entangled in these traps. And then they're, okay, so they're showing that, let's say you were walking through a particular 
your part of town and there was a business that was maybe a little shady and you walk in there or you walk near it and one of these mind traps attaches to your mental energy center to your third eye what occurs is that it sends off these pulses, like these neurological pulses that go activate things across their neural network. And it triggers things. It triggers people around you to speak to you a certain way. It triggers information to come to you. Uh, Maybe you suddenly become aware of a billboard or a sign or someone hands you a pamphlet. It it like pulls you in to these different websites and this different information. So if your mental energy isn't powerfully connected to your divine source frequency, all of these little mind traps every day, if you think about all the times that um, you're in a store and a song starts playing and it triggers something in you, an emotional wound is activated and half the time you're not even aware where you're being constantly programmed by these commercials and all of this and all these people around you who just make these random comments. So just their Kali Ma is just wanting you to be come aware of how these traps work and that your best defense is to really powerfully before you leave the house and before you even get out of bed in the morning is to just really establish that solid link with divine source energy and ask them to really powerfully come through and and protect your energetic field. And you know how when you go to bed at night, sometimes you forget to clear your energy and let go of the things that happened that day. And maybe you're dreaming about something that wasn't of a positive nature. And then you wake up and you immediately jump back into that energy. So she's wanting you to be very aware of you know, your thoughts before you enter your dream state. And one of the things that I like to do continuously at night, because people will infiltrate, especially people who can do this really strong remote viewing and mind control, they can infiltrate your your dream state. You have what's called a dream gateway. And the Archangel Gabriel can be sent forth to close that gateway. And you want to make sure that you're constantly checking on that gateway and making sure it's sealed shut. Usually if I get busy and distracted and someone does slip through that, um, it's very apparent to me. And I go through the process of just purging that out and asking for assistance to clear that and seal that gateway again. So just be very aware when you're going to bed, what you're thinking about, how you're feeling. And when you first awaken any dreams that come through, try not to move right away and think about what the guides and angels have shown you so that you can heal these wounds that are coming up for you and any fears that are rose during the night and stuff. Those are all things that you want to get clear of. So take the time and do the work. And I know it can be very challenging. There's so many things that call our attention in life, but um, you'll reach a certain point where it becomes absolutely vital that you do take the time to cleanse and purge and ground and connect every single day and multiple times during the day and just repeatedly if you're really being inundated with these energies. So let's cleanse some more of this root that's coming out here and let's um, clear these mind trap energies. Okay, so looks like Sandalphon and Metatron are coming through and they're going to help cut these mind traps off at their source. And I'm going to ask that you focus with me to clear every business, every website, every area, especially areas where lots of people are, parks and event centers and concert halls and movie theaters, and all that stuff. Anywhere restaurants, people gather in their homes, everywhere that you can think to purge and protect, just to come together with everyone else here that's a light worker on this planet and everyone in the spirit realm that has the highest and greatest intention to clear these energies away 
and ask for full support and protection against any backlash from these energies, seeing and detecting you. And what you can do too is before you do really powerful energy work is you can ask to mask your spiritual energy signature so that the energy work isn't traced back to you because they do tend to get quite defensive and upset when these energies are purged and you want to make sure you're protecting yourself and you're not under attack. So let's clear and purge and bring in protection for these mind traps. Let's get them out of here. O lava tiko lava kae almava te ayamanae imala teiko almale koe we're just, they're showing me how we're just burning all of this up in angelic fire. Angelic fire brings no harm to anyone, but it does clear all of these etheric energies. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> They're showing me a, a river. This is the Mississippi River. They're showing me like a alligator jumping out of the water. Why am I being shown this? Is this a protective energy that's clearing? No. Okay, so this is some kind of an attack energy that's coming through. So we're going to ask to seal the mouth shut of this being and just clear it out. And the angels are going to take it away. And they're showing me like a little tribe of people on the edge of a river that are using um, hallucinogenic plants to connect to the spirit world. And I really just want to interject here <laughs> that you do not need, and it's not really desirable to use hallucinogenics to connect to spirit. When you give up your control of your energy, you are no longer in residence enough in your own body to maintain and control the energies which come through to you and come into to reside and feed off of your energetic frequency. Basically, when you're releasing your inhibitions through drugs or alcohol or any kind of addiction, too much sex with, you know, random partners and any kind of thing that just takes you out, any kind of escapism is what Kali Ma is wanting to say anytime you're using a lower frequency substance or even mental activity or getting lost in violent video games or anything like that, you're giving up your divine energy to those frequencies and they are infesting and feeding off of your energy now. So it's really important to find a new way of coping with all of the frequencies that bombard us on this planet. And I know that can be really difficult. Some people get lost in food as well, overeating. There's nothing wrong with, you know, having a snack on the couch while you watch a movie. But if all you're doing every day when you come home from work is shoveling food in your face and staring at a show hour after hour after hour, you're not in control of your energy. You don't have to be in meditation and, and constant focus on on the divine. You just want to be doing things that are meaningful and joyful to you. And you have every right to just relax and enjoy your life and participate with friends. And those friends sometimes are going to have 
issues that they want to talk about. Just don't get stuck in the mind traps, <laughs> is what Kali Ma is saying. These are all uh, ways in which we are diverted from our divinity, is what she is wanting to say. Anaikamata vayala ayayavota vamana Iyamakana iso lalamalekana Iyamakana utalamekana Okay, they're showing me a... <laughs> they're doing a reference to the, the Kool-Aid. You know, there was a cult that had everyone ingest this Kool-Aid and they all ended up dying. It was poison. So they're asking that you watch what is being given to you. Be very wary. They're showing me like someone at a party who's being given a drink. And it's not just that someone can drug an open drink at a party. It's an energetic frequency. Oftentimes, what we'll do is to be polite we will, and socially acceptable, <laughs> we will accept a gift from someone, be it a drink or a piece of paper or a even a, a bigger gift, money, jewelry, whatever. Just be very aware, especially they're showing me antique furniture. So, <laughs> you know, those family lines that are just really have some dark history and toxicity and the family just keeps passing down the furniture <laughs> and the the paintings and the, the wicked evil aunt painting and the <laughs> grandfather who, you know, harmed so many and here's his, you know, old cigar box. You should keep it. <laughs> Just be very aware that these all hold frequencies. They are all very much sated with these old energies. And there's nothing wrong with you going to an antique shop and, and getting something or even accepting something. But, you know, really make sure that you're aware of what energy that holds and what you're bringing into your space and your energetic field. And be prepared to, if you really think you need it, <laughs> And oftentimes, once you raise your vibrational frequency, you will not even be attracted to it. You will not even want it. You will want to actually push it away from you. So, you know, watch those secondhand stores that you're receiving things from. If you're touching objects in the stores, just realize that a ton of people have held that owned it. Even new things, um, I'll purge when I bring it into my environment because there are so many people who have already touched it. The person who designed it, who thought it up, who created the store, who, you know, the salesperson who promoted it, the driver who brought it to you, the, all the customers that were in the store who touched it. All of those frequencies are on that object. So you can go through and clear all of that stuff when you um, desire to bring something into your space. It's actually Actually, a really good idea to just purge it. And Kali Ma is more than happy to help shift that. The angels will purge it in angelic fire. Uh, you can ask Archangel Michael to cut with his sword any connections that are lingering from there. Just clear everything out before you bring it into your space. You can sage it. You can do, you know, cedar wood or whatever you want to do to smoke cleanse. You can rebuke any old energies. You can just ask to have it cleansed so that you can truly enjoy that. They're also referring to moving into a new home, purchasing a new vehicle. That vehicle's been test drove that, you know, by a lot of people who wanted it. And, um, even their frequencies of, I can't afford this or this is connecting me to my old memories of my past girlfriend or whatever it is. All these frequencies are being projected at all these items and objects and places all the time. So it's just really important to really hold your own energetic frequency and really tune in to your intuition. Ask your guides and angels to help you to intuitively understand what <laughs> the guides are saying, what you're getting yourself into. I went to this just as an example. I was at this speaking event where this man came and he worked at a, a like a health place. I want to say it was Sprouts or something where they make the smoothies and stuff. And he brought these extra ingredients 
tickets to the event to share with everyone. And this man kept trying to connect to me. And I'd never met him before in this lifetime. But I think the first thing he tried to hand me was a a pen. In my head, my guides were like, it comes with a price. And so I <clears throat> made some kind of an excuse to not accept the pen into my own hand. And then I, um, he tried to give me something else. I don't remember if it was like a business card or his phone number or something, but some kind of a piece of paper and, or he wanted my information or something. And I, I think I made some kind of an excuse about going through the moderator or something. I don't know. <laughs> Because my guides in my head again were like, it comes with a price. And then he was giving all these drinks to people. (laughs) And um, he made like a carrot juice or something. And he was trying to get me to take this carrot juice. And I was just like, my guides are just like screaming in my head, it comes with a price. (laughs) I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? You know, and it's so hard because you don't want to be rude. But those energies and those frequencies, you know, so if you're forced into those positions where you kind of have to do something, you know, just (laughs) ask the angels to purge the energy from whatever it is. And don't contract yourself to this person. Um, There was some kind of a a really dark past life energy between the two of us. So I just went home and, you know, purged all of it out and everything. But my guides were definitely coming through very clearly that this was not someone I wanted to engage with in this lifetime. So just listen to the intuitive urges. And so just start becoming aware of your surroundings and what's going on there. And just ask constantly for the guides and angels and gods, goddesses, whoever you relate to, to come through and protect you. Kali Ma wants to to just let you know that a lot of people get nervous about connecting because of their religious beliefs, connecting to gods and goddesses and deities. And I actually have a sister who told me that she had a big problem with me connecting to, <laughs> to everybody in the spirit world, that she had an issue with me connecting to all these different guides and stuff. And she was like, well, mom told me that all I needed was Jesus in the Bible. And I'm like, well, mom told me to explore everything. (laughs) So even mom knew back then that we were very, two very different beings that came for very different reasons to this planet. And I always make sure that I'm connecting at a high frequency and, and asking spirit to help me discern what is a safe energy for me to connect with and what is not. So just become very aware of what's going on and don't allow your belief systems because belief systems are simply those things that we were taught. If you think of a computer coming in and being fresh and having no software and then somebody goes in and they put software on that, they put this program and that program and this other program and they're like, well, I I really like this program. This program was gifted to me by my ancestors. <laughs> and, you know, these false beliefs were <laughs> given to me and these old energies and frequencies were brought down the family line. And this is what my teacher taught me. So I'm going to take all this stuff and I'm going to shove it into your brain and your program. <laughs> and then you're going to live that reality. So just be very aware and make your own choices and question everything. You know, truly, I think that's one of the greatest gifts that my mother gave me was to tell me to question everything. It's like just because my brain has been programmed with this particular belief or energy does not mean that it is mine or ever was mine to carry just like guilt and fear and abandonment wounds and everything else. These are all just frequencies. And a lot of them, they were never yours to bear. They came down through your DNA. They came through your teachers, through your experiences in life. And you just have to work through them. So let's keep purging all of these energies. It looks like they've mostly removed the root here. So there's just a little bit left. We're going to finish pulling that out. So you might get sensations in your spinal column be very careful. Make sure you're drinking lots of fluid after this. It's going to release a lot of stuck energy in you. You might be emotional. You might cry. You might be angry. You might be fearful. Just be aware 
these energies as they release, they come to the surface, they have to be cleared. Oftentimes I feel really great after a healing and then the next day or two, I'm just like, I'm mad or I'm crying suddenly or I'm just exhausted or all these um, old memories of people I thought I'd purged from my field. It's like, oh no, all these thoughts are coming back up and all these old frequencies. So just keep asking over and over and over and over again. Pray without ceasing um, to your guides, to your angels, to Jesus, whoever you talk to. Just keep asking for help in clearing this. Purge all of it into the earth. She will take it all. She doesn't care if it's positive, negative. It doesn't matter. She will transmute the energy. So ask her for your help. Keep just shifting it down into the earth. Keep bringing in more, more, more of your divinity as you do this to fill the space. The universe abhors a vacuum. So as you clear energies out, more energies will come in to fill that space. So if you are not choosing to fill that space with divine light, then they're referring me to an old Bible quote where um, Jesus talks about how, you know, you cast out one demon and seven more can enter. It's because of that vacuum. There is no space that is left unfilled, is what Jesus is saying. So make sure that you're filling it with the God light. Okay, here we go. I am a Nava Taika Nika Halamika Taka Manaka Amika Tavaka Halamika Na Ia Chaka Mantra Kamanika Amika Navaka Namekata Olamaka Naka Fataita Amika Vataka Laika Na Alaveka Tachika Lakama Deep breath. I see about 45 angels surrounding right now. Oh, that's really beautiful. Okay, so <laughs> they're showing me like a ring. It's almost like a a rainbow imploding in on itself. It's like a ring of angels that are carrying a violet light. And inside of that is a ring of angels carrying the purple light. And then inside of that is a ring of angels carrying a blue light. And it just keeps going up inward to the center until it gets to this red and they're also showing me a brown for the earth star chakra so just see these angels holding these different colored lights um, in the colors of the rainbow and see them coming around you individually and just bringing all these frequencies through in these different colors of angelic fire. It's a really, really beautiful and powerful purging that they want to bring through for you. So let's just envision that and bring that through. Okay, I just want to thank everyone for joining this session. Whenever you connect to this, it's the perfect time for you. These frequencies are always, of course, timeless. Time is an illusion. Whenever you connect energetically, it's right for you. So thank you for coming through today to being a part of this healing healing is not easy. And I just congratulate you for being so brave to come in and face these really harsh frequencies and challenges on the planet at this time. And I'm just so grateful that you're here and you're participating, being so supportive of everyone on the planet who is seeking better and higher and more alignment and connection to source. They're saying, keep your eyes on source, continue to use this. Oh, okay. They're calling it a rainbow expansion ring. So continue to use this rainbow expansion ring to bring in these frequencies for yourself 
It's a beautiful, powerful tool. I might need to do just a shorts video on this so you guys can connect just to this frequency really easily and quickly. I'll look into possibly doing that when I have time. So the links to supporting my videos are below. So please um, know that I am always eternally grateful for any donations, any shares, any likes, anything you can do to expand this energy and connect to everyone who's willing to do this kind of work. So thank you for being here. I am sending you so much love and so many blessings. Connect to Source. Ground deeply into the earth. Get yourself stabilized. Deep breaths. Lots of water. Lots of rest. Thanking all the spiritual protectors and guides and participants today and everyone on the planet who's connected. Blessings.